Happy Wednesday, everybody. My name is Dean. My name is Tyler. And it's according to Low Elo, baby. Today we got some uh, interesting I, how do you, news. How would you <laughs> categorize Yumi? Problematic? Um, hated? Is she, is she, yeah, hated. I don't know. Is she totally problematic? I don't know. But she's definitely widely hated. Um, Has she overtaken the spot of Teemo as the most hated champion. Yes, yes. A lot of people always say remove remove her from the game. Teemo... Rian, Rian disagrees, but... Uh, I love her. Teemo, no one really plays or has an issue with, but, like, people fucking hate playing against Yumi. They see Yumi, they freak out, they lose their minds. So, yeah, she is, as it was announced, I don't know how long ago, she's getting, like, a mid-scope. Which is crazy because I see her. I mean, I think she's like three years old, but yeah, she's still rather new to me. Um, it's kind of scary when uh, I guess Zeri Zeri kind of had a whatever. A little bit. Uh, so so we got changes coming in thirteen point five. You know, we like to go over these more in depth changes instead of like going through it on the day of the patch because these are there's a lot of content to go over. There's a lot of things that like kind of digest and break down right and um yeah we'll see what what we got going on with her uh but the first thing we want to go over is over back on uh episode 132 which was the patch episode uh bjorn commented and said very happy to see the changes to ranked and de incentivizing duo should really just be solo and group Q, allowing for duo changing, uh, allow allowing for duo just changing the dynamic of everything dramatically, and would make duo boosting go away. Though I don't know how much of a business model that has anymore. Anyway, I haven't played ranked. I I just don't feel like playing ranked. I know the other day we were playing and. You were you finally it finally hit you with how many fucking shitheads are oh. just ruining games. Right, it's um, like not even fun to play because no one's even fucking playing. They just we join and then fucking don't play. I, I don't get it. We had a, a a Kiana in our game, and I I, I guess I guess you could blame me because I like pinged her to like. I, I want to say like we had a fight. She was full HP, didn't do anything, and I'm like, she, what are you doing? She ulted and then she left. And she was she like, ulted. She hit the stun on three, like all three members that were there in the Rift Herald pit. Uh, you and I think Purple were left fighting, and she just dipped. dipped. And then you like missing pinged her, and then she goes, "Cool, good luck, team." And she just tilted. Yeah, she immediately was tilted. One zero in like one with like she was fine. It was she close was to she was close to perfect CS two, and she for the next 20, 25 minutes she Made just walked movement. around in base. Yep. I don't think she I, even got banned because I never got a notice. No, that's what I was, she hasn't logged was, in yet. But that's what I was trying to explain. I was like, it, it they were still moving. If if they don't say anything in chat, they're not getting banned. I right. Riot does not give a shit about like soft inting. They don't care. That's old. Yeah, and I, she had done it the game before too. That was a crazy. That's part. right. I did look up. Um, in the match history, because I like doing that too. Yeah, right. Like you, you said I haven't. We haven't gotten a notification. That or like a, a instant feedback or whatever, but I went back and looked at the person's match history, and I'm pretty sure they even did it the game after us too. So I I don't know Riot just sitting behind their desks jerking off, not doing anything. <laughs> Sucks. Yeah, dude. No and idea. It, the it's game is just fucking frustrating. Not fun at all. Zero fun right now. So yeah. Um. I mean, I guess soloing is probably gonna be a better. I don't fucking know. I, I just... haven't won very many games soloing, but I think I've had a slight better experience. But it's tough to say, really. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. It's just so fucking frustrating. But uh, Bjorn, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, and then before we talk about Yumi, uh, of course, you guys, we like shouting out the YouTube. Go over. Started making. Uh, we're going to start doing shorts. So let us know what you guys think about this. Taking uh, funnies, like, excerpts from our episodes, just kind of condensing them down in, like, 40-second little clips. Right. Um, yeah, let us know. Go over and check it out. we got one up right now. It's about the Galio, what his best skin is. Uh, it was fun. And, um, yeah, let us give us some feedback on that. And if you want to see more of that, let us know. 
already. Cool. So All we right. got a bunch of Yumi changes here, and I've got scope, baby. Yeah, I've got Froxen's uh, Twitter pulled up. Froxen is the one who made most of the commentary on this, um, and as we go over some of these uh, pieces, I can I can let us know or give us a kind of a inside mind to what Riot is thinking. And, uh, yeah, so I don't know how you want to start, but... I want uh, to maybe start with underneath the the images. He says Live Yumi had yep. two main problems. Yep, yep. So I was going to so, I was gonna start at the top with the original tweet, and then he's got... Oh, go for it. One, two, three, four subsequent tweets. So his original tweet just says, uh, Yumi's going live in 13.5. We want Yumi to be a great champion to bring a new friend into the game and <laughs> also a great duo experience generally. And we're making changes to our outdated pricing model this patch to reflect this philosophy. She will be 450 Blue Essence now. Uh, that's fine. I I think that makes sense. Like, yeah, you want to bring in a new person. This is a good, easy champion for a new person to learn. Which is why I think this champion should continue to exist. I think I've said that a couple times. Uh, even on this podcast. Um, so he followed that up. He said, Live Yumi had two main problems. One, Yumi is frustrating to play against, especially when optimized. Two, she was the most powerful in the pro play bracket. We want to reduce the frustration of playing against Yumi as well as reduce her power in pro, which makes her better for average play. Uh, Yumi's untargetability can be frustrating, but we think it's required for her to succeed on her goals. Playing difficult champions that teach lessons the hard way is a great way to get better, but some players aren't looking for that and just want to have fun with friends. And I 100% agree with that idea is, yeah, you can have all of the um, ribbons in the world, but some people, like, I don't fucking ever care to learn how to play ribbon. <laughs> so, like, I think this makes total sense. Um, he follows up and says, we want to serve that motivation as well. We still want Yumi to be easy to learn and hard to master with points of mastery even after your 1000th game. And we tried our best to retain those. We just want those points of mastery to not be best optimized in pro play. So we're making her less frustrating in several ways. One, Q will be more dodgeable. Two, her healing is tied and landing her is tied to landing her Q. Three, her ultimate no longer roots. And four, her best ally to sit on will be her lane partner and incurs costs for swapping to fighters or assassins or mobile allies. So that's kind of the background of where they're coming from with some of these changes. And I think we'll start to see um how that plays out when we read through uh some of these changes so i guess if you want to start with the uh base stats and the passive yeah all right so base stats health growth was 84 now it is 69 base mana was 400 but now it is 440 and these may change maybe tinker sure. with here and there a little bit but I think that these are going to be pretty solid numbers to base it off of uh, when she comes out in two weeks and I guess next week in patch um, 13.5. Uh, you guys will be able to review the numbers specifically. Um, we're probably not going to get into great detail on what those numbers are because we're not going to remember what they were this week. I just don't have enough space in my brain. <laughs> right. Uh, so let's move on to her passive. Uh, hold on. Let me bring up. Let me go to the law wiki. Let me compare what her passive is exactly right now. So we can see exactly what they're fucking changing. It's still called feline friendship. Uh, probably. Let's see. <laughs> Yumi. Ba, 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 ba. Nope, not that. I do like uh, that. Broxton also gave us like that that inside. I don't know what to call it inside, but that idea of kind of what they're looking to do with this champion. Um, I I think oh. it's very important that you have your basic champions like ash and garen to play but like even more basic for people that aren't looking for that kind of experience you know what i mean so her her passive now is um bop and block oh cool they have the changes on on the lol wiki now oh do they so like how when when we would go to it says live in pbe so i can just read from this oh, okay if cool. this is cool yeah fuck that uh okay so yeah yeah live is bop and block and I'll read it. Uh, periodically, Yumi empowers her next basic attack against an enemy champion to gain 25 bonus range, have an uncancelable windup, become uh, non-projectile, uh, restore 25 to 100 based on level, plus 8% maximum mana 
mana and grant her a shield for 45 to 300 based on level plus 25 percent ap ratio that lasts until it is destroyed attached the shield transfers to whoever you're attached to pbe uh, it's called Feline Friendship, Innate. Periodically, Yumi's next basic attack, which has 50 bonus range or ability, hit against cha every enemy champions, will heal her for 25 to 110 based on level, plus 15% AP. Uh, if she is attached to an ally within 4 seconds, they are healed the same amount as well. Uh, innate. While attached to an ally, Yumi grants them permanent friendship stacks for killing enemy champions and minions each kill generating three and two stacks respectively so three for champions two for minions the ally with the highest friendship stacks becomes yumi's best friend which empowers her abilities with additional effects while she is attached to them so like right off the bat this is telling me they're incentivizing you to primarily stick on to one person yep um i i guess that's fine um curious if i haven't looked at these so i'm curious i'm assuming they took the heal off her e if they're putting it on her passive yes 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 we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get oh good note to say uh the passive um has a cooldown of 20 to 10 seconds so Ooh, it's not based on level okay mm -hmm. and how does that okay so it scales to level 11 so at level 11 it becomes 10 seconds so that's actually good to know too because she has a support so if she gets to level 11 that's its own thing too. So, yep. um, okay, okay. So let's. How see. do you feel about this? Like, what do you, I, do you think it's better that? I don't hate the idea of friendship stacks. Um, as goofy as that sounds, uh, I don't hate it. I think um, it's a good, it's a good different take on trying to bring the original idea that she was built for. If that makes sense. Okay. Um, I don't know that killing minions giving two stacks is even at all comparable to killing a champion and only getting three stacks. I think that's a little whack. So uh, I think, think the champion should be, should be like five and a minion should be like one or a half a stack. I feel like it should be too weak if it was just half or one. I agree. I think you should get more for getting kills. But I think I think I'm I'm, just, I'm thinking maybe the reason that they didn't put so much value on kills is that she doesn't just jump ship on the ADC and go somewhere else and build stacks really quickly mm -hmm. with somebody else. You know what I mean? So I wonder mm -hmm. if that's maybe why. And uh, think it's kind of like a like a dark seal really. Except dark seal, you get what one for an assist and two for a kill. I think. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll have to tinker with that and see how that actually plays out in game. I just feel like two for a minion is a lot. And there's not really any reward um, for the amount of risk you take to actually get a champion kill because... Yeah, I was going to say, she's you just sit really back weak. and farm. Right, so that she then exerts no pressure on the lane, which also doesn't feel fun. So I, that's why I'm thinking, like, if you drop the minion piece but increase the champion piece, it would be more risk reward balancing if that makes sense what about All right. you uh yeah i guess yeah yeah i agree okay we'll move down to the queue the prowling projectile this is mainly the same but a little bit different so let me read the old one for you uh so the active yumi fires an errant missile in the target direction that deals magic damage to the first enemy hit if the missile is in flight for one second, it deals increased damage and slows by 20% for one second against champions. The damage based on the target's health ratio is capped at 50 to 300 based on level against non-champions. Uh, attached, uh, or sorry, attached bonus, Yumi will channel for up to two seconds to steer the missile, after which it fizzles. Uh, so that's the current. So if we look at the PvE version, it's, it's pretty different, so... Active Yumi fires an errant missile in the target direction that deals magic damage to the first enemy hit, and if the target's a champion, reveals and slows them by 20% decaying over one second. Mm. While attached, Yumi channels for up to 1.3 seconds to steer the missile in the direction of the cursor. After one second into the channel, she loses control of the missile and it accelerates in its current direction, dealing increased damage and applying a stronger slow to the enemy hit, decaying over two seconds instead. There's a best friend bonus. Uh, which, again, is the one that you have the most stacks with. Uh, Prowling Projectile always applies the Empowered Slow against the target hit 
and additionally empowers the best friend's basic attacks to deal 10 Holy plus shit. 5% AP bonus magic damage on hit for 5 seconds. This damage is increased by 0 to 75% based on allies' crit strike oh. chance. So she gets an ardent sensor under her Q, but she has to land it. She has oh. to land it. And it's hard to land when it's only 1.3 seconds to steer that motherfucker. So, uh, the magic damage, the numbers are, are decently high, 60 to 210 base, but you're only getting a 20% AP ratio. Uh, and the increased damage is 80 to 380 base with a 35% AP ratio. And the empowered slow is pretty Ooh. strong, 55 to 80%. So 80 is fat. There, there is uh, some reward in, in landing that ability, right? You land that ability, you do fat damage, they're slowed as shit, and you're getting uh, on-hit damage like an Ardent Sensor. So that's kind of interesting. This is already just telling... I mean, unless you have, like, a Yasuo on your team, like, why would you... This is interesting now, because there are some champions, like... I guess you could... Like, what if... Like, uh, like Varus, if you're building Ginsu's, you don't have crit chance. Uh, you don't want to lane with a Yumi. Kind of feel like that kills it. You know, I wonder... I mean, I guess you... Let me see you realistically, you could... Here. No detail. I wonder... You, I really, no, really, it, really wonder if they would... The way it calculates crit strike chance, if that's calculated based on what it would be without Ginsu's, because Ginsu's is just a conversion. It, it I, removes well, it from your stat pool. So that's I wonder what I'm saying. How they... So if you don't have any, if it's not on the stats, I don't think it. I mean, it still seems pretty OP, like strong with like the on hit damage, but like. Wait, what is it? What is Oh, so let's see. So it's 75% allies crit chance of value. Okay. So at 100%, it's 75% extra damage. Okay. I'm, I'm looking to see if I can see any comments from them. I'm going to take a guess that it would just not work with people building Ginsu's. That just makes the most sense to me. Right. Because uh, yeah, it's like, oh, if you pick Varus... I mean, I guess if you didn't... Well, you have to go Ginsu's on Varus, I feel like. So it's... I'm trying to think of another champion that goes against who's 80 Ash. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, even, interesting. even then, 80 Ash isn't really building a whole lot of crit just because she doesn't really get damage for it, right? So she 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 prefers on hit anyways. But yeah, very interesting. Maybe I don't know who else. I mean, Ezreal gets decent boon now just because he's he's. Um, I uh, got Navori Quick Blades to fall back on, so he doesn't really go Triforce. He can go crack into Navori, so that's a option. But like, maybe nah, this doesn't work that well with Samira. You can do a Samira, but it's not that great. Uh, um, is there another like? Oh, I guess Caitlyn. Yeah, I yeah. Mm. I wish that, sometimes I wish they would explain some of these interactions with how they work with specific uh, details. You know. I feel like that would just take too much. They, You know they wouldn't want to do that. I know. It'd Instead of telling time. you how the fucking code works, they just throw it out there and expect you it'd to figure be, it out. It'd be interesting <laughs> to check, but I'm pretty positive. It like just wouldn't... You wouldn't obviously get that crit chance uh, bonus damage. Right, right. Um, all right, how do I feel about... So the the empowered one, the while attached, is a little bit slower, but it rewards you for hitting someone. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's really good. I, I, the fact that you can't control it after uh, one point three seconds is actually pretty pretty big. Um, I, I feel like it's going to be easier to miss. You know what I mean? As sure. It should be. Unless you. Do it point blank, right? Right. Um, does it become empowered at that point? Well, but it doesn't become empowered at that point, so... You still get the slow. You get the 20% slow over one second, but then you don't get the empowered piece of that, so... Yeah, but you still get the best friend bonus. You, you do still get the best friend bonus. Um, I think that's just... That's the main thing everyone should be well, looking I, at, is like... I think that 55% slow at level 1 is huge. Yeah, that's no that's shot. That's huge. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Time out. I I'm even looking at something. The the base stats are fucking insane. They're, yeah, they're huge. Sixty to two ten for the match right. damage, and then if you hit the the empowered one, 
eighty to three eighty is huge. Three eighty base, and right. then a thirty five percent AP. That no way, no shot. That fucking makes it. That's insane, dude. Yeah, but you won't be able to build her artillery at all. Like building AP is useless. You, I, you don't even have to. It's three hundred eighty damage. Right for no for nothing. <laughs> you just max it right. first. But they're they're also forcing you into like not ever building that build is like nope you're going probably Shirelia's and like you're just gonna have very minimal uh, AP mostly healing and and utility base items not even pff, this champion doesn't even ward very well so <laughs> oh that I, there's no shot that 380 stays. I don't. I I would be very surprised. That's just really fucking high. But all right, we'll see how PBE shakes out. I guess. Yep. All right, let's move back to go back to the live and the W. The you w. and me. Um. So passive. Uh. Whoever she anchors with gains bonus attack damage or ability power based on whatever you have higher. The percentage bonus of you and me also benefits from its flat bonus. Uh, Yumi gains flat adaptive uh, force plus an amount based on a portion of the anchor's current bonus tag damage or ability power, which whichever is higher. Okay, same thing. Yumi starts with a skill point in you and me, and Prowling Projectile instead has six ranks. Uh, active channel Yumi channels for a quarter of a second, then dashes to the target allied champion and attaches to them upon arrival. While attached, Yumi is untargetable except from turrets and inbound projectiles, and casts her spells from the anchor's position. The cooldown starts upon completing the channel. You and me can be recast after half a second. Yumi will be knocked down by any immobilizing or polymorphing crowd control during the dash. And then recast, Yumi switches her anchor to the target ally and attaches to them, refreshing the recast. She will detach automatically if her anchor dies or under certain circumstances. That's very... Okay, so it's in notes. I'll, I'd be curious. I've never read that, so I want to see what it... Right, uh, right. Um, if recast without a uh, target value... Uh, oh, If recast without a valid target, Yumi will detach from her anchor and dash 250 units in the target direction, placing you and me on a half a quarter second cooldown if it is not already on cooldown. You and me is placed on a five second cooldown if you you Yumi becomes immobilized, grounded, or polymorphed. So we looking at details. Um where is it this one? That's probably projectile. Where are these special okay? So when her anchor starts a teleport channel. So she becomes detached. Okay. okay. So teleport. Uh, re- after the anchor re- completes a recall. So okay. In base, she becomes detached. When she her or her anchor enters resurrection, her anchor is sent to the uh, realm of death or she is pulled by fate's call. Okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And then PBE. New one. Here we go. It's still called you and me. Is it? Hold on. Yeah. It's yeah. still called you and me. Uh, let's see. Passive. While Yumi is attached to her best friend, I like that they're calling it best friend instead of, like, anchor. Anchor yeah. just kind of sounds weird. Uh, she gains 10% to 20% based on allies level. Allies level. Interesting. So that, okay, stop right there, because that's... That's a change. It was her level, right? Uh, well, she didn't get, uh, heal and shield power, did she? No, but she got uh, adaptive damage. Or did she, yeah, she got adaptive damage, and they got adaptive damage. I believe, is that what I think that's what you said? Yeah. So okay, so this is just basing. So let's see. Eighteen is twenty. Okay, so that's very interesting because like it might incentivize you to jump on a higher level ally, but if it's not your best friend, okay. Right. Um, well. So the what I'm reading here is that this only works, yeah, on whoever your best friend is. Otherwise, you don't get any of that. So let's see, heal and shield power, and cause their basic attacks to heal them on hit. Additionally, Yumi starts with a skill point. In you and me, problem check. Okay, same, so same thing. So the on hit heal is three to eleven plus four percent AP. So she has, okay, so there she has two heals now. All right. Sure, three to eleven is not a lot. Even with four percent AP, that's not a lot. So that's very minimal. That's like a less than a Doran's blade. I think it. No, it's like a, think of it as a um, a coal. Coal is three HP on. Hit. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, that's better than life steal. That's better. What is what is Doran's? Uh, is it like three percent life steal? Omni. Yeah. I mean, that's that's already. I think that's way better already. Huh. Yeah, three hit. Yeah, but I mean, it's still not much. I think it, I don't know. That's... I don't know if that's enough to change a lane. I mean, it's it's okay. Well, let's just keep saying because I that that's already seems a little problematic. Um, active Yumi channels for a quarter of a second, then dashes to the target allied. And attaches to them upon arrival. While attached, Yumi is untargetable, except from turrets and uh, inbound projectiles. And cast her spell from the ally's position. The cooldown starts upon completing the channel. You and me can be recast after half a second. Yumi will be knocked down by any immobilizing polymorphing crowd. It's all the Control same. Control dash. So it's the same. And is the rest the same? Yeah, it's all yes, the same. It is. Yeah. So they're getting rid of the adaptive, but then they are giving uh, their ally on hit healing. Also, I think that's... I think it's interesting that Prowling Projectile uh, gets six uh, ability points, which we didn't note when we went over that. Or I didn't catch. I did. I mentioned that. Okay, okay. I, I didn't you... see that at first, but yeah. Did you not know that? No, I didn't see I wasn't paying enough attention <laughs> that it had well, six. Well, I'm saying, like, if you, like, all the times you've played her? Uh, well, no, her, her W had six points, I thought. No, I don't know. Uh. Because you start, it forces you to start W. Oh, and then but yeah, yeah. Maybe I, I don't know. I guess I never thought about it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I, yeah, I think I knew that. I was, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think three to eleven, and then four percent. The four percent AP is not that much, but I mean, you're just basically giving your man. I don't know. I feel like that's a little. little uh, I don't know. I, well, it just, I don't like, think it's too yeah. nuts personally but it's not insane but it's just giving and plus it's giving so so think of it that way she has additional heal and shield power so she's giving it is that is that apply to that right is that how that would work so give another uh 10 percent on top of that sure i mean that's not that much but that kind of adds up um i don't know that's you know how i feel about healing in the game um right and just Buy yourself an an early executioner's calling, and you should be fine. Oh, you know, no one likes to do that. I know they don't, but do it anyways. Do the right thing. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. To me, it doesn't seem that nuts. To be honest, it seems pretty mild, in in, in comparison to what she could do before. So, I think we should check out her E, and then we can make an idea what we think about these two skills, since there's some swapping going on here. Yep. Um, so her current E zoomies, uh, active Yumi heals herself and gains 20% bonus move speed and bonus attack speed for three seconds. Attached zoomies affects the anchor instead of Yumi. Uh, new PBE E, um, is also called zoomies. Um, at active Yumi grants herself a shield and gains 35% plus 8% AP. Bonus attack speed for three seconds while the shield holds. The target also gains twenty uh, percent bonus movement speed. I don't know why they change it to say the target, but that just means while you're attached. So while attached, zoomies instead affects the ally. <laughs> while attached, zoomies instead affects the ally instead, <laughs> and also restores mana to them, increased by zero to one hundred percent based on allies missing mana. So that's new. Uh, shield mm -hmm. strength is 90 to 210 plus 30 percent AP minimum mana restored is 20 to 36 maximum is 40 to 72 um, so that's like the old uh Soraka e mm -hmm. you can need the silence or give mana so um they're putting the shielding onto that one of the things that's not mentioned in here that I did see is the way her old w interacted with Airy. It will no longer do that. So a lot of people, you can take Aerie and you can jump from from ally to ally and apply the Aerie shield as long as so long as you had Aerie, which would come up pretty much immediately once you jump because Aerie follows you and it has nowhere to travel. Right? That is not going to be how this works anymore. I think Froxen mentioned it. Um, I did see this here. Where did I see it? Um, cause they, they changed the, the instance for how the W works. So it doesn't like in the past, the, the game would code that as, Oh, 
you're assisting with, you know, whatever you need to proc area, which is usually a healer or a shield, um, it no longer will allow that to happen. Okay, yes, it no longer counts as a positive boon for yes. summon area? Yes. Okay, that's, that's no that's big what deal. I was looking for. That's so fine. That, that does, uh, there it is, that's what I was looking for. That does make a slight difference, and that's why I think they put the shielding on the E, because they want you to have the shield, but they also want you to have to cast it with a cooldown as opposed to using it on airy, which is pretty much instant. Well, let's say it's also the fact that they're not wanting you to really jump around. They want you to right. stick on someone, so there'd be no point for... Right. It, it works it works twofold here. Mm-hmm. Zumi, it's okay. So, what was her? What's the live attack speed that she gets on that? Twenty uh, percent. Yeah, twenty percent. Twenty. That's movement speed. Twenty-five to forty-five percent attack speed. And then this one is. Oh, okay. There it says. I thought it was. Sorry. I thought it applied to both. So okay, so we don't have okay. So she still gets the twenty. That gives the twenty percent, and then thirty-five. So it scales now. Um, right. Thirty-five plus eight percent AP. Okay, so it might be a little bit lower again, unless. Your, now the AP ratios aren't that high on her, so I don't think you should be. You're not gonna have enough. Echoes. I mean, let me look at. Um, I mean, you might. I mean, maybe you'll get over a hundred, so that'd be another eight percent. Or no, that's that's yeah. Like if every hundred you get eight, right? So I think so. Eight percent right, right. of current AP. So her her current most popular build is Shirelia's. Which is forty AP, uh, Mikhail's blessing, which doesn't give any AP, uh, into Putrefire, which is eighty AP. So you're still not getting a whole lot out of that. And then if you get to Ardent Sensor, it's another sixty, so you're one hundred and forty. And if you get to Staff of Blowing Water, that's another fifty. You're not even hitting two hundred. So, oh, I didn't count the spell piece, which is I think eight to. 50 at max rank so you might it might tip you might over hit 200 but you might that's going to be well it's going to be more than 45 that's easy. a yeah that that's going to give you a little bit more than a dagger from the from the ap ratio right so 35 plus another 12 percent so i don't know it's so that's yeah it seems like a buff it seems high um, but again that's that's late game yumi it should be i think it's fine if it's late game yumi though mm-hmm. like at the end of the game if she has to get there right uh, and looking at this, I think you're going to probably max that ability maybe last. The E. Either second or last. I think you're going to max the Q first. I think that's what's really important here is just the, the damage amp. And I think mm-hmm. you might max that E either second or last. I'd have to really look at uh, the W. And yeah, see, I think you're going to... You might max the W last. So... Uh, man, I feel so. We're we're giving a shield. I feel, oh man, this is so packed with shit. And <laughs> it's I feel like she's gonna be better with spellcasters. Like this is like Lucian, Ezreal, true. Uh, anybody that's gonna build Navori, I feel like it's right. gonna be casting a lot. Zaya, I don't. Man, this seems like a little too. This seems like I. I I guess I'm not too mad at it because the fact that that she would just jump around, I think, was the frustrating thing. But if she's going to stick on the one person, I guess I have to give her more incentives to stick on the person. So they're kind of, I don't want to say it's overloaded, but it's definitely for if that's your play style to sit on one person, it's going to be pretty strong. Well, um, th- think about this, though. Uh, what other supports can you play, right? You can play Leona, Nautilus, Thresh, Janna, Nami. Nami most assuredly does more damage and healing than than Yumi does. Um, the thing with Yumi lane is it's one champion more or less versus two, right? She's probably going to be attached to you the entire time, more or less. And when she's not attached to you, she's not worth a damn. So uh, her being attached to you should be slightly overloaded to make that one champion able to 1v2, if that makes sense. Oh, well, I know we had this conversation a while ago. Right, right. Like, that's that's the glaring weakness is that she's not this, like, on her own is not the same as another champion. 
So she has to, she should have some parts in her kit that are really strong because she's a, there's not another presence on the map. There's only four people on the map as opposed to five champions on the map. So um, it's going to have to be, it's going to seem a little OP, I think. But I think when you start playing against it, it'll make more sense, if that makes sense. I feel like it might be... We haven't got to her ulti yet, but I feel like I this is going to be a little overtuned, and they might have to like drop it a little bit. Like, yeah, and like we said, these numbers are probably going to change anyways, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't think that's out of the ordinary, so I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. All right, let's see what the ulti says now. This is in PvE stage anyways. This is testing, so. Mm -hmm. This could all get scrapped. <laughs> I doubt um, it will all get scrapped, but the numbers certainly might. <laughs> so, current final, uh, current ulti, final chapter. Yumi and Book channel up to three and a half seconds, launching seven waves in the target direction that each deal magic damage to enemies hit. Enemies, champions hit, take only... 50% damage from subsequent waves. And when they're struck by three waves, they become rooted for one and one quarter second. This may only occur once per target. And then PBE. Uh, active Yumi and Book attach or channel for up to three and a half seconds, launching five waves in the target direction. If final chapter was cast while attached, Yumi can steer the waves in the direction of the cursor until she casts you and me so she can control the direction now okay i feel like wow. that's a little bit quality of life i kind of like that because if you're sitting on someone and they're a fucking donkey and they don't know which way to look <laughs> right. or if you're like running away and you want to use the bind you right right right, right. so let's no, see um allied champions hit by the waves are healed all right i'm done dude <laughs> with each heal Dean just quit Dean just rage quit right now with each heal instance beyond <laughs> maximum health being converted into a shield they'll last for 3 seconds plus the remaining channel duration instead enemies struck by the waves take magic damage and are slowed by 10% for 1 and 1 quarter seconds which stacks and refreshes on subsequent hits up to an effectiveness of 50% subsequent waves on enemies hit deal 25% damage Best friends bonus final chapter heals to the uh, heal to the best friends is increased by thirty percent and additionally grants them bonus armor and bonus magic resistances for the remaining channel duration. Wow! Oh, and it's only are, for the channel. That's not bad. So what? Three and a half seconds. Okay. Yeah, but that's actually really not bad. Man, you're juicing your fucking. Uh, okay, so let's see. Heal. It's a juicer. So the heal is thirty-five to sixty-five. Plus 15% AP ratio, which if it's the full duration you're hit by is 175, 375, 325, is 75% AP. Uh, magic damage per hit is 75 to 125 plus 20% AP. Uh, reduced damage is 18 and three quarters to 31 and one quarters plus 5% AP to a max of 150 to 250, 40% AP. Which is and bad. then the best friend heal total or heal the minimum uh, heal per per wave is forty five and a half to eighty four and a half with a nineteen and a half percent AP ratio. The total heal uh, is huge, he, is massive. Uh, two hundred twenty seven and a half to four hundred twenty two and a half with a ninety seven and a half percent AP ratio, and then the bonus resistances is twenty to sixty, scaling with ten percent of her AP. Man, you are a fucking juggernaut. I, so I have I have one question after I see all this, but go go ahead. I this is this seems very fucking strong. This I is have nuts. One question. Um why would you ever play Soraka instead of playing Yumi? See, that's that's my only question. Is that this now makes Soraka useless. Other than the fact that her heal is global. And she has a silence, though. That silence feels gross. Yeah, but it's Yumi's healing is going to be probably more reliable. It doesn't cost her any health to do it. And... Sure, I just feel like Soraka is a way better lane bully, and she just sits there and slams sure. that Q at you. Yumi not really doing much. Right, but... They have differences. I, slightly, but I feel like this is just like... So this is way, an way easier stronger. Soraka and stronger for sure. 
Like well, why yeah. would why play Soraka when you could play this instead? Just the overall the fact that you don't have to jump off to get that passive auto attack to get the shield and then hop right. back on. So it's a lot easier, it's a lot safer. You have way more you have three forms of healing now. But also a lot weaker. It doesn't do as much damage, I don't think. I really don't think it's gonna I, the damage is gonna hold. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not worried about her dealing damage. I'm worried about the person she's sitting on not gonna die sure. and do like damn. They do they really have to give if it's the best friend bonus the armor and magic assist. Do they really need to do that? Twenty to sixty. Come on. Yeah, I don't know. And then the, that's and then that the... seems like a little too much. Yeah, heal is in, yeah, the heals increased by 30%. Then 20 to 60 seems like a fuck ton, but then again, those champions aren't gonna have much armor or MR, so that I don't know. That feels like I mean 60 at 60, that's a whole fucking full item. That's two full items because you don't there's nothing in the game that gives you 60 a piece, right? Plus, if she tips at 200 AP, that's another 20. Sure. With the 10%. So 80 sure. up to 80. Let's we'll call it 80. Um, but again, that is also super late game. Like, sure. Uh, Chances of her getting to level sixteen are not like not not looking good. <laughs> so that there is there is safety in that. Is like the numbers you should be looking at on all these things should be the middle number, right? Also, uh, I'm looking at the fact that she doesn't have any hard CC anymore. She doesn't have no, a stun or a no hard CC at all. So that's fine. Just slows up the ass. Right. Uh, it's so all soft. Um, which is, you know, Master Yi, don't give a fuck. Right. Uh, Olaf, he never gave a fuck, but he really doesn't give a fuck now. <laughs> um, who else is, um, someone else I was just thinking of that, that isn't affected by that too. I, it'll come back to me. Sejuani won't give a fuck. Uh, it, it, I feel like this might be just a li little too overloaded. Maybe I'll have to play it, play against it. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't think you're entirely wrong. I think it might be slightly overloaded, but I think it's just going to come down to the values of the numbers. I don't think the play style is, is as overloaded as it was before, if that makes sense. The Q is certainly going to be a lot harder to hit. Um, the ulti doesn't have a root. So you are going to have to depend on your monkey of a laner to be a human and not an orangutan. Yeah, that's why they're kind of incentivizing <laughs> you to play with someone. Right, right. A good, a good duo option. And even then, uh, we still do orangutan things. I can tell you from experience, it happens. Sometimes you do something, you're like, I don't know why I did that. I, I really do like <laughs> the fact that you can control the direction of the alt now. Mm -hmm. I think that might be one of the best, like, kind of quality of life. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to see what people, some people are talking about. Don't look at the tweet. <laughs> I'm looking at the tweet. Oh, um, it's just people on shitting the... on it. Of course. I might get this wrong, but this feels like she got everything on her kit and feels like it didn't solve the frustration that is her being attached nonstop to a champion. It feels horrible to play against. There's no reason for her to get out of someone now. Uh, someone else, uh... Uh, <laughs> damn, so instead of being an untargetable, untargetable mobile pocket adaptive stat item with sustained CC, she'll be an untargetable mobile pocket better ardent sensor with lifesteal, able to build it too. Plus mini gargoyles, plus mana refill, plus heals and shields, and heals and shields power. Yeah, I think she's okay now. Uh, I, mean, I like the idea, just to understand <laughs> why she'll give allies mana. Soraki used to do that, and they removed it on her rework. That sound a little yeah, unfair. See, that's... Like, they they like removing shit from the game and then bringing it back. Right. Um, uh, so okay, I'm on the subreddit on the post. Someone said Yumi and Lucian sounds like a really strong bot lane. That's, right. I I can back that the extra that, hunted. That, does it, does that kill uh, Nami Lucian? Yeah, I think Nami. <laughs> yeah. Um. You gotta remember too. She's got to make it through <laughs> band phase. Oh, hey, look, it's Arden Sensor. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's all I could think of was Arden Sensor. Oh shit. Uh, oh. At yeah. least don't nerf any champion who results to be broken with Yumi when the champion isn't made for the bot lane, bro. Example, don't nerf a mage made for mid who starts to seem broken as APC just because of Yumi changes instead nerf Yumi. Um, <laughs> yeah, all these okay. people are talking about... Uh, someone's like, uh-oh, I think it's Lucian's, Lucian's gonna get a rework again. 
Yeah. <laughs> Friendship with Nami is over. Now it's Yumi. There's literally no point to pick Nami with Lucian. Like, she literally... Yeah. Yumi does everything Nami does, but... Unless unless you're banning, unless Yumi's banned. And you have a backup. As someone who likes that, I'll be able to slam the wave a little more oppressively and try to make the people... Yeah, like, you just... You run out of fucking mana? Oh, E. And I'll get... You get a shit ton back. Maybe not a shit ton. Is it based on missing mana? Let me read that again. Yes, it is based on missing mana. You get more... The more they have missing. Um, Let's see... What else? Let's look at one or two more. Oh, this is an interesting one. This one says, in my opinion, if Yumi is being designed to bring a new person into the game, abilities should be designed to be able to be understood by someone with no game experience the first time they read the ability. I think I would push back on that because no ability makes any sense to someone who first starts playing the game, unless it's those basic abilities from the original few seasons, the first few seasons of the game, where Gnosis gains 20% lifesteal mm -hmm. yeah, you know what i mean so like i sort of understand your take but also it doesn't translate because we all had that point regardless so i'm sorry this looks like this is uh mr tom hollow on um twitter but uh, i don't i don't like your take i'm sorry this one's pretty good uh someone's like now yumi can no longer attach to hecarim vlad kane lilia and make the game boring to play like or sit right. on Udir, just zooming around. And I, like, I think that's a big part to, like, why she can be a little overpowered for one champion, but then, like, not really offer anything to anybody else. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, if she... If, now, if she was able to do that to all champions at, like, Well, that would be game, totally fucking broken. Yeah, yeah, I would have a big problem with that. But, like, considering she has, like... It's the best friend bonus. The rest of it's kind of moot. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know... Some, I, Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, someone else mentioned, I'm curious why this was handled so fast. Like, this was very quick. Like, a month or two turnaround that they oh, said yeah, they were going to rework her. And people are complaining that Rel didn't get one or whatever. Oh, that, I mean, come on. You know on. what's nuts is Rel is actually a really good champion right now, too. Is so she? She is. I have she's, not seen a Rel. She's just, see. she's a higher, a higher ELO pick. But Rel's actually a pretty decent champion right now. Okay, Plat Plus, she has a 52% win rate. Oh, okay. That's a pretty Only good champion. 1% pick rate, 1.5% pick rate, so. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Rel has a has a specific case, and when she's played, I mean, considering her Q delete shields, um, that's a pretty big piece, and then obviously you have to... She's a champion that needs a lot of coordination, too. She's not like a I just a, a don't like the fixed attack speed, because her taking out wards with Rel is... <laughs> Seems mm -hmm. miserable. It's fucking awful, dude. It's actually fucking. It, she attacks so goddamn slow. It's it's actually awful, and she doesn't have a an auto attack reset like Nautilus or Leona, where where they can like use their Q or W. Oh, uh, if her make her Q would be able to hit wards or on hit like or towers or something, yeah. that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, we're not talking but, about Rel. I know we're talking. Whole, I was gonna say we're talking about that's Yumi, a but whole another can of worms. I I don't know totally what to think about the whole thing but i don't think it's as crazy as as we might think it is i have a f fuck. i <laughs> i i just feel like this is gonna either i want to say this is gonna be like a home run like this might be just too much like i was gonna say it's either i don't think it's gonna be bad by any means i just I don't worry, they'll, they'll just, hot fix it. Like just, they've just done seems, every other fucking change. Right. Well, they, I mean, they've said they'd rather put out changes that are a little too strong and then dial it back slowly. But I feel like collectively, if I'm whole, if I'm looking at both kits side by side, which I'm literally doing right here, um, I feel like it's just a buff. With with maybe like the the root getting taken out of the ulti and a little less damage, or I I don't know I. Is a l this worries me a little bit, and like if if my only counterplay is to ban it's to counterplay this champion is to ban her, that's a problem. Then that no that that would certainly feel so, bad. So I'm sure they'll look at what ban rates are if like people don't even want to fuck around with this thing. Um, right. And then we'll of course we'll see how crazy it is in pro play. Yes, we will. So 
Uh, that is it, unless you have any other thoughts. That's all I've got. I kind of don't know really what I think of her 100%, but um, I'll be interested to play mm -hmm. her when she comes out and see kind of uh, where, the, where the chips fall. So, guys, uh, we haven't had a question of the week in a while, but let us know what are your thoughts on this. Is this OP? Is this not OP? Right, yeah. What, Give us what your you opinion think, right in. Um, but, yeah, guys, as always, make sure you like, sub, uh, comment, Please. review, share. any of those things. Yeah, share. That one's a big one. Anything Wherever that, you are. Yeah, yeah, anything that increases engagement will will bring in more people, even if it's people you don't know. So uh, I know a lot of you guys like to jump in the channel and talk to us about it, too. Mm -hmm. Drop drop comments Instagram or, or YouTube or whatever. The more you guys interact, the more it's going to show up uh, for other people to listen to as well. And then we'll, the more feedback we'll be able to get. It's kind of like a snowball. Right. So go ahead, uh, wherever you're listening or watching right now, look in the description, hit that link tree, come join the Discord, and you know we're here if you ever want to play or just talk or whatever, and we'll have some fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, other than that, we will see you on Friday for champ review. What did we... We had two champions that like didn't have a lot of changes, huh? Uh, yeah, I believe so. And I think we the left. third one was like a... I'm just double checking. Yeah, the third one was like a big, big change. Mm-hmm. Um... Fuck did I go? I lost it. It refreshed and I lost it. Here, I think I uh, is it? I think it's Misfortune Sona because then we got Swain Lux. Yeah, Misfortune Sona is next. Yep. Ooh, so uh, that'll be a quickie on Friday. But maybe we'll, maybe we'll cook something else up and add to that episode. But yeah. We'll uh, until then, guys. Uh, good luck in your games, and we will see you on Friday. Later, y'all. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to like the video and sub to the channel if you haven't already. Click right here to see the previous episode of the According to Low Elo podcast. Click right here to see the most recent gameplay video. Thanks again.